And my guest today is Patricia Combo, the founder of Patri Initiative, and she's also an environmentalist. Today, we are going to tackle the aspect of advancing climate action through tree growing. Uh, climate change is a problem that is affecting everyone of us across the globe, but we have to act, more importantly, growing these trees. Because most people take uh, tree planting as a, as a ceremony, but we want to make it different. Let's grow these trees. Let's uh, participate from the planting period all the way to maturity. So we are going to have Patricia helping us understand a few of these things since she's an expert in that. She's involved in planting trees, growing trees with school children and different other people from different parts of this country. So Patricia, welcome to this meeting. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be your guest today and happy Labor Day. <laughs> well, Patricia, to our first question, um, we, are, we know very well we are in a very difficult time. In the coronavirus pandemic is affecting everyone of us. So it means so many things have stopped working, but are we going to stop acting on climate change? No. So maybe you can tell us why should tree planting, tree growing not stop despite the pandemic? We need to continue doing it. Over to you, Patricia. Okay, okay thank you. First to our viewers, my, as she has told you, my name is Patricia Mumboa Combo. I'm the founder of Patri Initiative. And Patri Initiative, our goal is to help Kenya attain 10% forest cover by incorporating school pupils in environmental education awareness and planting and growing trees whereby we we grow trees and we revive the 4k clubs i know a lot of us had the 4k clubs back in our schools which today most of them are dead we revive them but we call them environmental clubs first there is no planet b and there are things which we should not take like we should take them seriously. Now that every majority of people are at home, it's actually the best time for us to plant trees because we're in April and May and we have, we have lots of rain. And why we, should not, why we should not stop planting trees is because as much as we are fighting coronavirus, we are also com campaigning for climate, for a livable planet. As you see, weather patterns have become unpredictable in Kenya. We have a lot of floods, a lot of climate crisis. And one of ways of mitigating the climate change is through tree planting. And I'd like to refer to one of my mentors, the late Professor Wangari Madai, when she said there is a machine that is invented and the role of this machine will be to absorb excessive carbon and that machine is none other than a tree. So we should take this time to reconnect back to nature, plant trees, and anytime you are touching the soil, you are growing your tree, it has a mental healing to your kids and even to the general family during this time because people are stressed out and planting trees can be an exercise to give you, you know, that morale and also to heal your mental health. Um, recently, we've realized, uh, or rather, we've experienced a lot of flooding in different parts of the country. Talk of Kisumu, Baringo, Marakwet, and even here in Thika, Nairobi. So it's really happening. Could it be that people are not planting trees, people are doing a lot of agriculture and forgetting that, you know, you don't have to degrade the environment, you don't have to deforest and plant more trees. What is your take on that? And according to Kenya Forest Service, Kisumu, as per counties, Kisumu has the least forest cover. And one, one way through which trees reduce flooding is by compacting soil. Because when it rains, you find trees have different types of roots. We have the fibrous roots, we have the tap roots, and they hold the soil moisture intact and they ensure the run of water is reduced and there's a lot of infiltration in the soil. The trees will reduce the, 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 the rate of water runoff to the river or to the lake by ensuring the soil is intact. And when we have a lot of forest, they form a canopy. 
And when it rains, the raindrops hit the leaves and the canopy, whereby the, most, of the, most of them, if the canopy is continuous, you find only little water drops in, gets to get into the soil. When we talk of trees, they also help in, in conserving our soil nutrients because if we do not have an adequate forest cover, you find that we have the sheet erosion and it carries along all nutrients. And you find after, you know, after the rains and after the floods, you find our farms are left bare. So tree planting is one of the crucial, it's one of the natural fl flood management whereby they reduce the, the speed of run of water and they also reduce a lot of soil being, depos being deposited in our river banks. So like the regions which in Kenya experience lots of flooding, you find their forest cover is a bit lower that's why you find the speed, the speed of water is, you know, it's high. And also due to lack of the canopy and trees to, to, to act as a barrier through which the water will reach the ground. I'm sure you've watched uh, news or you've seen a lot of information going around uh, about um, flooding in Maraquet, Maraquet County or in Baringo County. And you can clearly see that uh, people are living on the hill slopes. Some are doing intensive agriculture on those areas. So, and you actually explained that uh, trees reduce the speed of the running water. Having said that, do you think we are failing somewhere? Do you think people are not taking it serious, uh, the aspect of growing trees? Yeah, because you find in Kenya, the major causes of desertification and deforestation is as a result of agriculture, pressure for agriculture and illegal logging. And you find if people can build their houses or rather do agriculture on a sloppy place, it gives a higher chance of water to run, you know, the runoff and it's, it's a hill. The runoff water will be high. People are not taking keen interest because we have climate deniers, people who they keep saying, it's, it's normal, they take it as normal. Little do they know climate dis disruption is coming to a point of no return, a point whereby nothing will be able to reverse the change. And back to our leaders and back to the society, you find in rare cases, let me take example of uh, presidential debates and you know campaigns. I've never had any politician or any president during their presidential debate, talk of their climate action plans, methods of mitigating climate change. If you elect me, this is what I'm going to do. And you find if it does not come from our leaders, you know, it narrows down to the communities. And again, lack of enrollment of environmental education in schools. So you find little information on environmental conservation is passed on to the kids. So you find they will grow not appreciating efforts on climate mitigation efforts, efforts on environmental conservation. They will not know why we should not always cultivate, we need to grow trees. So I think people are not taking it serious. And, there's, there, and even the media has failed to, to enlighten matters environmental to the communities. That's, you, that's why you find in some communities, they do not take that initiative as part of them, simply because they, they do not know the importance of having forests, the importance of growing trees. And another thing is the issue to do with the seedlings. You ask people why you don't plant trees, we don't have seedlings. So in Ethiopia, they planted a million trees within one day, which was led by their president, with their prime minister. If in Kenya, a leader takes that initiative to train communities on tree planting, I think the ignorance part will, will go. Because if we fail to take action today, we are the one with, who are going to suffer. And you know, effects of climate crisis, recovering from them, they take years to recover because like people who are hit by mudslides, their floods, their property is lost, their most, some have lost their, their relatives. So you find recovering from them, from the scenario will take um, a longer time than if we, you know, we prevented it by planting trees. And one thing I tell people, 
planting trees is the simplest thing. Okay, thank you, Patricia. You talked about having a day for tree planting, and you mentioned about Ethiopia. Yes, Ethiopia is doing a great yeah. job. And I remember a few months ago, I think it was sometime last year, uh, the president launched an initiative of tree planting, and the Minister for Environment has been has been really involved in that. However, we are doing a lot of tree planting. So this brings us back to our, uh, our topic of the day, which is tree yeah. growing. Why are we emphasizing on tree growing over tree planting? Because I think, like I said before, people are just doing uh, tree planting as a ceremony. People have birthdays, people have, um, you know, school games days, then every activity has a tree planting. But what happens the, during the next day, the next three to four months, once you plant, who is going to take care of that tree? Who goes back to do a follow-up? So let me just take you, Patricia, to now your work. We are in lockdown, but I have seen you uh, participate in a couple of challenges, tree challenge, lockdown challenge. So can you tell us about that? Okay. During my lockdown, I've dedicated to plant over 5,000 trees. And I know people are asking me how. Last year, I, I started my home nursery, whereby I have liberia, I have papaya, I have pine, and the umbrella trees and guavas. I started a small project whereby I collected the seeds during dry season and I put them on a nursery, which now are doing well. My goal was to plant them during April. There are around 400 trees which are ready. I'll be donating to my neighbors, to be, yeah, everyone I meet. I already have started distributing some. And the main aim is to ensure I use this time to do something constructive for community. It's all about giving back to community. I've decided to take this chance to, to help nature heal by planting 5,000 trees. And I know it's possible. Yeah, it's possible because it's part of my climate strike in Kenya. Are you going to be planting these 5,000 trees by yourself or you will work with other people? You've said you'll be distributing uh, seedlings and seeds to your neighbors and the community at large. Will that, the yeah. ones you distribute count to the 5,000 or the 5,000 are the ones you plant yourself? No, they will count. The 5,000 will count from the one I distribute to... To, my, to the community at large because I, I monitor oh, them. But you, so we know it's hard right now to do a lot of things, like tree planting. Yeah. It's not easy. You cannot just say you want to go from, you know, move from your home, your tree nursery to another place. So what could be the challenges that we as conservationists, environmentalists, or any other person who wants to contribute to the environment are facing at this point? Uh, let's start with yourself. What challenges are you facing? I'm sure there are some things you can't do right now and you wished you could have done. Yeah, first, oh, the challenge I'm facing because the schools have closed. And, you know, majorly I've been working with kids. And also we have places where we, I would wish to go and learn. I've seen on Twitter one of my friends, Michael from Meteor Alliance, is doing. And, you know, I would have wished to, you know, go there and learn from him. We had forest, World Forest Day. It was it. It's sad. We celebrated in in our houses because of lockdown. Last week we've had Earth Earth Hour and Earth Week, and you know you are in the house. You know the virtual one, but you need to be there. You know even as you plant tree alone, you know you, you need a group whereby you plant, you train each other. That's the challenge we are facing now. Yeah. That's the challenge, but we hope very soon things will come back to normal and we'll get back to our lives as it used to be before yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. Sorry to cut you, but thank you so much. Because of time, I think we are going to close this discussion and we proceed. We'll continue the discussion on Twitter. Thank you very much. And to the general viewers, take action. Vow to plant at least two trees during this lockdown. At least it will be a, it will be an history to your great grandchildren. This tree was planted during Corona period. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care of your planet. Take care of your environment.